permiso, buenas tardes. Jack, Hi, can you hear me? Morning. morning, Andres. I'm so happy this is our last webinar, and also we have our special guest. She is very good. What's going on? We're doing good. Let's rock and roll, Andres. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. So we have two minutes to start, okay? And we are going to, to wait for some people to come, okay? Are you ready for Christmas? Huh? Oh my God. <laughs> Hi, Miriam. How is it going? Hi, Andres. Fine, fine. I saw your pictures. It was so nice last night. Yeah, absolutely. Who did you, who did you ask? Are you ready for Christmas? Yes, I'm ready Everybody? for Christmas. Yeah. Oh my God, you are. Wait a second. Wait, I'm, I'm going to do something, okay? Uh, <laughs> may, okay, let me see. Uh, okay. Okay, good morning everybody. Welcome to Andres Rodriguez English Coach Webinars. We are so glad to introduce our special guest, uh, Mary Goodman. Okay, here, hello Mary. Uh, I want to introduce you, okay, right now because here we have some colleagues and, some, and most of them have been your students in different mm -hmm. Ecuadorian institutions. So many people have, have talked to me that they will are really interested in participating in this webinar so i absolutely combine that <laughs> we are going to have an excellent presentation from you okay so i i i want to express my admiration because i have seen that mary has already presented many topics in different uh, institutions in ecuador and, and the united states and other places she has already worked in espiritu santo espiritu santo high school okay in in other places sen in an academy here in guayaquil ecuador so the topic that we have today is pronunciation matters okay so thank you so much mary this is an honor that you are here with us and you can present this topic okay so the time is all of you okay thank you andres uh good morning everybody and um Please, a couple of things. Number one, I'm from New York, so sometimes I speak too quickly. Huh? Um, and I teach adults. Someone's got music in the background? Someone's got music in the background. Oh, it's me, I'm sorry. Uh oh, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm from New York, so if I'm talking too quickly, let me know. Okay, I'll try to slow down. Um, I teach adults, not kids. So, if I have any jokes that are inappropriate, I'm sorry, remember I don't teach kids, I teach adults, huh? Um, 
And uh, I'll probably try to get to a little bit of stress and intonation today, which I didn't get to in the last seminar. Um, Andres, can you ask in the chat maybe how many people already listened to this seminar, either with the USPE or with the Casa Grande? Do you know? Is there a way to know how many people have already seen the other seminar? I mean, the one I taught before? Okay, we have exactly 10 people, 10 participants. At the uh, moment. I think okay. they're totally different from Casa Grande because they're... Uh, right. No, yeah, I'm just asking, have they seen the seminar before? Have they seen this or it's new for them? Do yes. You know? <laughs> okay. Okay, so anyway then, for those of you who have not seen this, I'm going to be repeating some of the things I did in the other webinar, and then I'll try to get to some of the things of stress and intonation. Just so I'm not a big distraction here. My glasses so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so... Um, I believe that pronunciation is very important. Um, I know that we all study, you know, grammar and vocabulary and all kinds of interesting things, especially well, grammar, I love, but reading and writing and all these different things. But pronunciation is very important. We're going to see some reasons um, why. So let me go ahead and start with the first slide. If I can get to it, here we go. So um, I was teaching a Venezuelan student once at a university nearby. And when she arrived late to class, she said, sorry, t-shirt, I just got laid. So anyone who understands those jokes, they're laughing right now. If you didn't understand the joke, well, you didn't get it, it went over your head. But her grammar error, I mean, she meant to say, I was late, you know, sorry, teacher, I was late. But she mispronounced late like laid, Okay, which has a sexual connotation. So what she was telling me, for those of you who didn't get the joke, she was saying, I'm sorry, I'm late, but I was having sex. Do you understand, Andres? Anybody yes. who's laughing got the joke. If you're not laughing, you didn't get the joke. But it was a funny thing, but it was, it was funny, and I got the joke. Of course, most students didn't get the joke. But what, what I'm trying to explain is that her mispronunciation uh, was a moment of laughter, at least for me, the teacher. Okay, so um, on the internet, I saw this cute little thing. Uh, the daughter said iPod, the son said iPad, and the father I paid. Of course, on the right side, you're going to see um, you're going to see the um, phonemes that uh, correspond with those vocabulary words. So I just added the grandfather said I peed, and the baby I pooped. So we're going to get into a little bit about uh, minimal pairs. I taught this at the Leica University for many years, and I love teaching there. But we always had this uh, issue teaching there that I'm from New York and my good friend Rosario Elliott is from Australia. So we always had that, who, you know, whose English is better. So we'll get into that in a moment. Okay, so why is um, our miscommunication so important? Diane Larson Freeman in her book called Grammaring, where she insists that grammar is the fifth skill in addition to the four main skills, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. She says that the most important errors to correct are those that interfere with meaning. We need to review and discuss them with our students. So a simple mix-up can cause confusion, like I said before, late and laid. So here we have another one. Let's look at who and how. Hmm? Okay. So I'll read for you. It might be too small for you to read the print. I don't know. Miriam, can you see it? Can you see the print? If not, yeah, I'll read yeah, it. I can see it. Yeah, no problem there. Okay, so it says Prime Minister Mori was given some basic English conversation training before he visited Washington to meet President Barack Obama. Of course, it was some years ago. The instructor told Prime Minister Mori, "When you shake hands with President Obama, please ask, how are you? Then Mr. Obama should say, I'm fine, and you." Now you should say, me too. Afterwards, we translators will do the work for you. Well, it looked quite simple, but the truth is when Maury met Obama, he mistakenly said, who are you instead of how are you? So Mr. Obama was a bit shocked, but still managed to react with humor. So Obama said, well, I'm Michelle's husband, ha ha. Then Maury replied, mm -hmm. me too, ha ha. Mm -hmm. Then there was a long silence in the meeting room. Okay, so again, a simple mix up, of like who and how, just in pronunciation. Of course, the vocabulary mix up and pronunciation, the two combined. 
Um, so I don't know if it will come through this time, but let's see if it does. If it doesn't, then I'll just read it to you. It didn't come out the last time. Oh, well. Okay, we had this problem last time. Okay, there was a video, and I'm not always able to show it. I don't know why. But the young man says to the woman, he looks like he's British and she's from a uh, somewhere in Asia. And he says, could I have your number? And she says, sex, 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 free sex tonight. But she was trying to pronounce 666-3629. So again, if you want a girl's telephone number, I hope she pronounces it correctly. <laughs> anyway, again, pronunciation, I love it. Okay, so if we're going to teach pronunciation or help our students with pronunciation, we do need to know the basic terminology. And again, when I was a teacher at the Laika University many years ago, um, I had to teach a lot of these different things. So uh, we have to know what is a phoneme. It's a single sound. And every time you see something like these letters between these slashes, um, that I'm referring to a sound. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. So we should be familiar with the International Phonetic Alphabet, which looks something like this. I'm going to show it to you. Um, every book, every ESL book, every usually in the grammar books, um, in many of the books, they have the International Phonetic Alphabet. My problem with this is that um, many books don't use the same International Phonetic Alphabet. They vary it. And also, if you open up a dictionary, most of the dictionaries don't share the same International Phonetic Alphabet. So that can be confusing if you go from one book to another. So back to this about terminology, we should of course know what are vowels and consonants, and we should be very aware of um, the differences between Spanish and English. We should know what's a diphthong. There are three in English. It's a combination of two vowel sounds. So we have, for example, ay, 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 ay. We have au, 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 au. And we have oi, 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 oi. Do you hear the difference in those three, those three diphthong sounds? We have to talk about what syllables and syllable stress. Uh, we'll get to the stress in a second. So uh, as far as syllables, we should know that words are divided into different parts, such as terminology. What do you hear? Five syllables, right? Pronunciation, five syllables. But we need to also know the stress. Where do we put our emphasis over which um, syllable do we need to stress, huh? Um, and we'll talk about that in a bit. So there are also some called sibilants, and when we're teaching the rules about the S and the Z and the IZ, which I'll get to, um, we need to know about sibilants. Uh, long sounds and short sounds, we'll get to that in a moment too. So the long sounds, we have, for example, E, A, A, O, U, O. Those are longer sounds. We should pronounce them longer. And most Spanish speakers don't have problems with the first five of them. Of course, with the last one in green, aw, which is my New York sound, some people, of course, have problems with that. But the short sounds are usually the ones where the Spanish speakers do have problems because your vowels are uh, a, a, e, o, u, right? They're kind of longer ones. So our short ones, i, e, a, no? U, u. Do you hear how short they are? So if you're not pronouncing them short, you know, there's a problem in pronunciation. And we'll have to know something about voiceless and voiced, where you have vibration in the throat or you don't. Huh? So we'll get we'll move on if you don't mind. Um, so we should be very aware of the differences in pronunciation for Spanish and English. Most people say Spanish is so easy to learn, maybe not so much the grammar, but in terms of the pronunciation, because, you know, the way it's written is the way you pronounce it. Mama, papa, mi mama, mi mima, right? Of course, you do have some few exceptions like hola. Maybe a gringo trying to pronounce Spanish would say hola because they're trying to pronounce the H, right? And in that case, you don't pronounce your H. Yeah. Um, and of course, that double L, which sounds like a Y. So it's like, aye, pollo. So of course, the gringo will pronounce something like cale polo or something like that, right? But English is such a pain in the neck, to be polite. Yeah, nothing that you know where. 
is just ridiculous because um, we don't pronounce it the way it's written. And even words that look so similar that we would assume, oh, we pronounce them similarly or the same, not at all. So just look at a few examples which drive everybody crazy. So we have ratio, look on the right here, ratio versus ration. Re, ra, re, ra. Do you hear a difference? Yes? Even though it's, it looks so similar, doesn't it? The spelling, you're just adding one little e and one little n. So ratio, ration. Look at this, these next three. They look so similar, it looks like you'd pronounce them the same, but we don't. The first one, pronounce it comb, like I need to comb my hair. The next one, it's tomb. There's that ooh sound, tomb. Yeah? He died, he was buried. He's in the tomb. We have the tomb of the unknown soldier over in Virginia, near Washington, D.C. And then we have ah, bomb. So look at the difference. Comb, tomb, bomb. Do you see? There are three totally different vowel sounds. So this is part of the problem of trying to learn English. So the more exposure we have to English, um, uh, videos and songs and rhymes and things like that, the better, the, you know, the, the more familiar you'll get with pronouncing correctly. Uh, because just by reading it, you're not going to hear these different sounds. So just a few more. Thought. There's my oh, my New York sound. Tough. Uh. Though. Oh. And through. Ooh. Do you hear the different sounds? Yes or no, people? So this is a problem. We have all these words with O-U-G-H and totally different vowel sounds. Let's look at a few more. Boot, book, blood. Isn't that crazy? We would ass assume that the double O is pronounced the same with the same vowel sound. It's not. Uh, look at the G-H in the first word. Cough, <coughs> cough. You hear that final F? That GH sounds like an F. But in the word caught, the GH is totally silent. So again, these are rules, like not necessarily rules, but sometimes there are a few rules that we can teach our students. Other times it just comes with practice and practice and exposure to the language. Look at another, another pair we have. Said, raid, said, raid. Do you hear a difference? At A-I-D, you would assume it's pronounced the same. It's not. Same with the O-U here. Fought, found, fought, found. We have aw, ow. Totally different sounds. And even one we had before with a cough, look at this one. Cough, tough. Cough, tough. This is another one that people mix up. New, which is a oo, versus so. Miriam, can you sew? Yes, I can. Good for you. You can sew some buttons on some of my shirts. Okay. I cannot sew. Okay. So new sew. Isn't that crazy? And of course, now versus row, like row your boat. So I just want to go through those examples um, because these are typical examples of things that your students will encounter. And they're going to ask you, well, why did you pronounce it this way when I know this other word is pronounced like that? So I want to move on. So one of the first things a lot of students ask me when I used to teach at the Laika many moons ago, um, and they used to ask, uh, well, where is the best place to learn English? Where am I going to pronounce it the best? So, of course, if your teacher's from England or Canada or Australia, they're going to say their country, right? I'm from the States, but where's the best place in the States to learn English than the correct pronunciation? Is there a correct pronunciation? Hmm? So even people from the same country pronounce words differently, uh, have different accents, right? He, uh, think about la costa and la sierra, right? The coast and, hi, Glenda, there's Glenda. Um, you have people from different parts, even of the same country, who don't uh, speak and pronounce things correctly. Um, correctly. Ah, the same. <laughs> of course, New York is the best. <laughs> okay, I'm joking, I'm joking, sorry. So one of the problems, like I said, when I was teaching at the Laika University many moons ago, um, I would teach, uh, for example, in first year students phonetica, and then second year they'd get Rosario Elliott. 
and she's from Australia. So the first year students were so happy. They finished the year. They said, yeah, I understood. I learned some pronunciation. Then they'd get to the second year and Rosario would tell everyone, forget about everything Mary Goodman taught you. She's from New York. Don't listen to her pronunciation. I'm from Australia. I have the best. So again, people fight about where is the best. It's like in Spanish, people say, is it spoken more uh, fluently or better, whatever, in uh, España, in Spain, the mother country, or somewhere in South America, who knows? Okay, so I'd like you to read um, silently, if you don't mind, quickly, and I'll be quiet for a moment. <laughs> Has everyone had a chance to read it? Can you see it? Okay, so yes, um, our students would be looking for new vocabulary. There's a lot of grammar there, but I'm also interested looking at it in terms of pronunciation. So let's take another look at it. Do you want me to read it to you or you were all able to see it clearly? Anybody answer, someone? Blenda, Miriam? Oh. Uh, it's clear? It was clear, clear to me. Okay, you could read it. Oh, okay. So if you understood it, some people were supposed to be laughing. Ha ha. Or in, you know, a smile on their face. Why? Because what are we supposed to understand? Look at the final message. Now, do you see the advantage of knowing a second language? Of course, if we do this, I usually do this like first day of any class, um, even any level, just to... Um, go over some of the funny things in the pronunciation, the interesting things, and um, the vocabulary. Okay, again, depending on the level of grammar of your students, you'd have to see because you've got past progressive tense here, you've got past tense here. So um, I guess probably not true beginners, but intermediates definitely advanced, you could use this. So as far as, um, as I said, vocabulary, we uh, and vocabulary, we're gonna see uh, new words like spotted, crouched, pounced, um, scurried. These are probably new words for our students, right? And uh, eyeballed, which they can probably figure out from the context, right? Uh, so we can figure out that eyeballed means they were staring at each other, correct? And then uh, why did the cat scurry away? Miriam? Because it was a dog barking at him or her or the cat. Okay, the dog so was barking at the cat. Well, supposedly. Oh, yeah. He okay. heard the wolf, right? Okay, so, uh huh. So, um, so Glenda, Glenda, hello. You there? Yeah, we're here. Come on. Hi, Glenda. Okay, right. um, what are some vocabulary uh, things that kind of jump out at you that you definitely want to teach your students, especially if they're learning past tense pronunciation? Spot, probably. This word you're saying spot, like spotted? Yes. Yeah, spot. you said? Huh? Yeah. Okay, yeah. couldn't. Okay, so spotted. Um, another one. Again, right for the moment, past tense pronunciation. Eyeball. Huh? Eyeball. Eyeballed. Okay, another one. Anybody? Andres? Uh, <clears throat> Eyeballed. Yeah, that's what uh, Glenda just said. Okay, any, another one? Scurried. 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 And there's a few more, a couple more. Crouched. 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 Yeah, okay. Um, what else? Fed. Opened. Sorry, repeat louder. Opened. Sorry. Opened. Opened. And turned. turned. Okay, so yeah, if the student has not learned like past tense pronunciation, you probably would not start with this, but definitely for students who are uh, being introduced to past tense pronunciation, that would be important. Uh, the diphthong sounds, ow, of pounce and crouch, no? The consonant sounds at the ending, mouse, mouth, huh? And hearing the difference in those um, consonant sounds. Okay, so let me just move on. So uh, these were some of the items I said that I would probably point out to my students, you know, after we've had our little laugh about the meaning of this idea that um, 
the cat was scared because the mouse was able to speak, you know, dog language. Um, so as we can see, if we know vocabulary or can figure it out from the context, if we have some sense of grammar and pronunciation, all of them will help us with our accuracy and fluency. So let me push ahead. Things that uh, the frequent mispronunciations we have from our students, right? Um, they're pronouncing uh, kitchen where they need chicken. I want to eat the kitchen. No, I want to eat chicken for dinner. That one we've heard before. Um, of one I hear a lot from my students is they confuse woman and women. Listen to the difference. Wo, we, wo, we. You hear the difference? Woman, we, women. Hmm? So they are nice. The grammar is telling you it's plural. We need to pronounce women, but unfortunately, the many students pronounce woman. Uh, hungry and angry. Uh, I feel very. In this case, both are possible, but if you look at the second part, let's eat, then it has to be, I feel very hungry. You have to put that H in that word. And there is a word, Glenda, hangry, which is you're angry because you're hungry. Maybe you've heard that word too. Okay. <laughs> Um, another one that I always laugh at, I mean, to myself, I won't laugh in front of the students, but I'm laughing to myself when I hear my students say, oh, Mary, how have you been? It's like, ¿Qué tal frijoles? No, I'm not a bean. You know, how have you been? So again, here's a very good example of bean, long sound, bin, short sound. We have to hear that difference of the long and sound, long and short sounds. Um, I like Halloween. Really, technically, both are possible. Customs, costumes. Customs, costumes, both are really possible, depends here. But if you're talking about traditions, the sentence would probably be, I like Halloween customs and traditions. I repeat, both could be possible, but look at the difference in the pronunciation. Yeah, good, good examples. Yeah, okay, a few more examples. This one my students always mix up. Quit, quite, quiet. Look, quit, one syllable, like I quit my job. Quiet. Like he's quite tall. Yeah. Again, one syllable. Now listen to two syllables. Quiet. Quiet. So if I can't hear him, he's so quiet. We need to pronounce two syllables. This is another problem where the students, they know the word, but they don't pronounce it correctly. So they'll say, you know, he's so quiet or he's so quit. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, it's another one. The Of course, uh, dessert and desert are typical ones that are mixed up. I want a cookie for uh, desert. No, I want a cookie for dessert. Huh? Uh, I had a student who always mispronounced this one since. A lot of my Spanish speakers, my Brazilian speakers, they, they mix them up since. Science. And again, since one syllable. Science has two syllables. So I've been here science. No, I've been here since Tuesday. Notice again, one syllable, two syllables. Ankle, uncle, ankle, uncle is one of the first. I, when I first went to live in teach in Ecuador, it's one of the first ones I heard of that mispronunciation. So uh, it's possible to hurt your uncle. It's possible. Maybe you had a fight with the guy, but probably in this case, because now I can't walk, I hurt my um, ankle. Rich, reach, rich, reach. Do you hear a difference? Short sound, long sound. If I win the lottery, I'll become rich. Pronounce it short, not long. Want, went, won't. So if the food is disgusting, so I won't eat it. This one, a lot of my Brazilian students make this mistake. It's history, three syllables, story, two syllables, and store one syllable. You see that difference? So Cinderella was a great story. We need to pronounce two syllables, not one, not three. Okay, I know we're already getting behind time, so let me push ahead. Um, okay, so again, I mentioned before a big problem, one of the principal problems or biggest problems I find teaching 
English and the pronunciation is, as I said before, the words that look so similar and you just assume that they would be pronounced the same, but they're not. And that's one of the craziest idiosyncrasies about learning English and why it's difficult for Spanish speakers who are used to pronouncing the way they see it. Mima, mame, mima. So look another couple of examples here like, um, Doll and dollar, doll, dollar, have the same vowel sound, right? Ah, and we have stroll, and then we have stroller. So these words all look so similar. Why are these ones ah, and these ones are oh? Nobody knows. I can't explain it. I was not there when the first people invented English. Another crazy one, plain plaid, plain plaid. Do you hear the difference? My students always try to pronounce it like played, or they say played. No. A, ah, plain plaid. Do you hear that difference? Okay, so uh, some of these I said, be, uh, I'd mentioned before, but again, even um, E Y endings, money sounds like E, survey sounds like A. Why? God only knows. Hmm? No knowledge. No, which is O, na, ah, knowledge. Look how the different, the different, uh, we, difference is this O, W. Look how different that is pronounced. Even you've noticed because you had to teach it, read, which I call V1, and V2 past tense, read. Read, 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 read. Read, read, you hear that difference? If you teach it in a fun way, like long, short, long, short. And of course, you've probably encountered some other crazy idiosyncrasies like a tear when you cry as a noun or teardrop versus tear when you rip something up or you rip something out. So conclusion, does spelling always help predict pronunciation patterns in English? No, of course not. Why is it so unpredictable? because English is crazy, that's all I can tell you. So, rules to learning pronunciation of English. If you notice, ha ha ha, our spelling errors, there are no rules, ha ha. No, there are some rules, especially past tense pronunciation rules, which we get to, and the S and the Z and the IZ rules, there are some, um, and uh, we'll get to some of them, I sure hope, and if not, Andres, maybe we'll have to come back for another finish up and talk about more of that, depending on what I finished today. Hmm? Okay, so um, I'm going to go through this super quick. I'm not going to spend much time on it as I did in another webinar. But one principal thing, as I said before, is we really got to be familiar with the vowels. How many vowels do you have in Spanish? You have A, A, E, O, U, correct? You have five, Andres? Yes? Yes. yes. Okay, those of you who are still awake. Um, how many vowel sounds do we have in English? If you follow the International Phonetic Alphabet. Well... Yes, 20. Yeah, uh, go back to the International Phonetic yes. Alphabet. We have 12 vowels and three diphthongs, okay? So compare that to five vowel sounds that you guys have. So that's one of the problems. If they can learn to pronounce the different sounds and get the idea of long and short in the pronunciation, that will help a lot. So in the basic ones like e, it, e, it, e, it. You should do some physical movement in the class. The students can feel the difference between the long. So we say favorite, clue, true, blue. But a lot of my Brazilian students add that E as like an extra syllable. A lot of my Brazilian students. So they'll say like, um, they'll say like, hey, T instead of hate, you know, gay me instead of game. They're trying to pronounce an extra syllable, uh, which doesn't need to be in, in English. We don't have it. Um, so again, it's not pronounced that final E. However, um, a silent E, although a silent E is silent, it can change a short vowel sound into a long one. So look how interesting this is. K, uh, sorry, cap, cape, cap, cape. Just by adding that silent E, the vowel sound change. Maybe this is a rule you already know. Maybe you've taught this to your students. I don't know. Um, kit, kite. Kit, kai, ton, tone, tub, tube, cop, cope, cut, cute, hop, hope, mop, mope. Do you see how just by adding that silent E, the pronunciation has changed? 
So again, these are a few rules we probably want to teach our students. <coughs> Sorry. Then we just had before um, A, the long sound, and then we get E, the short sound. Um, and oh, there are some minimal pair contrasts, many that we can teach. I don't have time now for all of them, just to show you that if you teach these, what I would recommend is to have some movement. It's kind of easier in the classroom in person versus here on a computer screen. But I try to show some long, short, long, short, even if it's just with your hands. So pain, pen, wait, wet, tail, tell, taste, test. Do you see what I'm saying? Paper, pepper. Some of these with your students, if you wish. I, I especially like to focus on these four because I find Spanish speakers and the Brazilian speakers have problems with this. Um, but you can add music. So again, we're doing. Oh, oh. Sorry. Somebody said something. Hello. I think Tanya has a question. Mary. Okay, I don't see him. No. Uh, hello, everybody. No, no, I don't have a question. So sorry okay. to interrupt. No. Oh, okay. Okay, so you can add any kind of music in the background. And again, when it's when it's in person in the classroom, it's fun because you're up and you're out of your chair and you're dancing. And maybe Miriam remembers this from many years ago when we did all this of fun course stuff. I do. But of course you know, I do. on a computer screen, what can I do? You know, move my hands around. That's I remember I too. So who else? Who's there? Aglanda too. Okay. Too. Exactly. So remember, Glenda, we had like long short like sheep, ship. So we can do that, it's kind of fun, but it's more fun if we add some music. So let me hear, let me, let me know if you can hear the music or not. Cause the last time I did this, nobody could hear the music. So I don't know. Okay, so again, you can do the long, short, and long, short. Sheep, 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 to start uh, the music so that we can listen to you better. Okay, yeah, so that way. Yeah, to, anyway, down. yeah, anyway, people, you get the idea, right? The idea is to show the long and the short, use some physical movement. Again, in the classroom, it's 100% easier. You stand up and get everybody dancing and feeling the long and the short. And you know, the Ecuadorians, they love to dance. So any <laughs> opportunity to get up out of their chair and dance, they love it. But the problem is now we're here on computer screens. So you'd have to back away from the computer screens. They could see you, you know, doing the long and short movements, you know? Let me see if that's it. We ah. got you. We're back on the screen. Okay, I'm back on your share screen, but where is it? And then go back to the presentation. And okay, we're that's what I'm trying to do. But now, now one second, I'm up to you. New share? New share? No, you yes, don't have to yes, new, new share. share. Go to I think yes, new share, because I have to find the thing again. Here it is. Yeah, new share. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I find this thing, but I don't see the, I, I mean, back to this stuff, but You're I on. can't make it bigger. You're yeah, on. but I can't there. make it bigger. So That's I don't okay. know. Yeah. Well, uh, Mary, okay. You, you, you can press uh, at, at the bottom. Yeah. And just open it next to that minus sign that you have there. Minus sign. Bottom, right, the right, copita? Right, yeah, that, that. Copita. Yes, that. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Back to the copita. Okay. Everyone wants the copita. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm lousy technology. I never know which thing to press. Okay. Anyway, back to, I think what I'm doing here. Okay. So just to go back, if I can, ah, okay. We did that one here. Now I can't see them. Okay. So we talked about long, short, long, short. And I, again, I teach a ah, as long, so it makes a nice um, contrast. No, um, just to show you, for example, one more time, Dean, Din, Dan, 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 so again, if there's a mispronunciation there, you know, you're saying someone's name and you're talking about something else. Okay. Um, again, I don't have time to go through all the vowels and all the diphthongs and all this stuff. It really is, uh, it really is kind of a webinar that needs two, at least two sessions. But um, getting this idea of um, long and short, for example, hat, hut, hot, cat, cut, oh. cot, cap, cup, cop, sack, sock, sock. Do you hear a difference? Yes or no? If you can hear a difference and your students can pronounce that difference, that's the main thing. That's the hardest thing is getting them to hear the difference, then of course pronounce the difference. Again, just for time's sake, I'm gonna move on. But again, here's that schwa sound, uh, uh, uh. Hmm? And ah, uh, which books are cons considered short, 
Um, again, I usually teach it sometimes short, sometimes long, depending. In this case, hat, I'll teach it as short, you know? But if I'm just trying to compare um, hut and hat, then I might say hut, hat, hut, hat. So that ah sound again, uh, sometimes I teach it as long or sometimes short, depending on what I'm comparing it with. Okay, so um, I used to monkey around with these sounds in class um, for the ooh sound like in pool or cool or look and look. Students always mix up look, look. They say, look at that, you know, so sort of look at that. Uh, again, from the context, we know what they're saying. There's no interference with meaning usually, then it's not a big problem. When there's interference in meaning, that's when we have to stop for a moment and not just address the one student who made that mistake, but make it like as a general comment. I've noticed a bunch of you are mispronouncing this word. So can we go over the pronunciation of that word for a moment? No, but you're not going to, you know, make that one student feel like an idiot because he mispronounced it in front of everybody else, right? So, and of course, over here on the right, which is luck. So you've got, um, ooh, uh. Ooh, sorry. Oh, oh sorry. Ooh, ooh, uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Do you hear the difference? So again, with my adult students, I'll teach them more like some something like that. that they'll remember it. I know it sounds kind of inappropriate. Maybe it sounds inappropriate. Yeah. Definitely not for your oh my God. elementary, not for your middle school. But again, for adults, you know, if you teach the sounds with like a funny name or give them a funny name, they remember them more. Hmm? Okay, there's a quick question because let me I'll just quickly show you my awe from New York. Okay. Mary. Yes. Yes. My question is, I notice you say adult. Yeah. I say adult. That's fine. Both are possible. There are some words that do have different um, ways of saying them. Yes. You can say adult or adult. He's an adult. Again, I'm from New York. Maybe people listening in from other places would disagree with me. I don't know. Anyway, here's my awe of my New York sound. And um, it's hard for some people to pronounce it, but I just always say, uh, put your mouth like this. Like you're trying to kiss somebody on the right. Brilliant. The crazy thing with this awe is that you have all these different spellings. Look at all the different spellings for that. So how are you supposed to know to pronounce aw when you have all this variety of spellings that all represent this aw and can also represent other um, vowel sounds? It's crazy. So it says at the bottom, if you're not from New York or New Jersey, you might disagree with me. But I always give this example of dog or boss. Yeah, she's my boss. He's my boss. You know, I have a dog and people are like, I say dog. Yeah, a lot of people say dog. I say dog. Again, I'm from New York. So that's another thing you really do have to point out, you know, depending on um, your pronunciation, maybe because you learned English in New York or maybe you learned in Canada or England or somewhere else. So again, just to quickly finish up some of the vowels, um, you can do these contrasts, like these, this pronunciation pairs book has all these contrasts, yeah? Um, I love this one of sounds, if you stress them. You can try some dictation practice if you wish. I used to do that with my students. They used to get mixed up, but that was the whole fun of it, you know? Don and Dan, we're done by dawn. My pal Paul pulled the pole in the pool. Of course, nobody's going to be in, in, you know, in the streets talking like that. It's just to practice the pronunciation. Okay, uh, just a quick thing. There's a lot of different activities we can do with our students. One is a book called Look Again Pictures. It's listed in the bibliography and also up here at the top. Alamany Press, Judy Olson. Um, so if you take a look at some of the names, how it's so easy to... Uh, mispronounce some of these names longs and short and yes, long and I short huh? jean jim jane jen jan john joan june maybe to you sounds like a tongue twister huh again identify long sounds short sounds in this book look again pictures you'll see um uh the teacher parent teacher uh, meeting and in the back here on the wall we have different names that we just mentioned to talk about the different um, vowel sounds. Of course, it's a great book. I always recommend this book for classes because in finding the eight differences, they have a, a lot of vocabulary, a lot of grammar, a lot of pronunciation activities. 
Okay, so just quick, uh, because I don't know how much longer you're going to give me, but I have a few activities. One is the number rhymes. Again, working on rhymes helps a lot with pronunciation. So if you think of numbers, think of numbers from one to 10, and we do some chanting like blue and shoe rhyme with blue. Oh, Two. About numbers, 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 Glenda. Oh. Okay, blue, blue. and shoe blue. rhyme blue. with two. Gay and hate rhyme with two. Pine and line rhyme with nine. nine. Four and more rhyme with four. four. Eleven four. and heaven rhyme with eleven. Seven. Seven. You already have eleven here. Okay, then you can also do rhymes. Look, those were rhymes with numbers. You can do rhymes with colors. Again, for elementary school, this is probably better. <laughs> you don't want some of those inappropriate things I did before. So pronunciation, color rhymes. Again, the same idea. Head and bed rhyme with red. 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 Queen and queen rhyme with green. 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 You and you rhyme and with blue. blue. Huh? Okay, so you have the idea. You can do with numbers, with colors, with whatever different category you want to do. You can do some rhymes. You can do tongue twisters. How many of you have done tongue twisters for pronunciation practice? I hope you all have. If not, Google pronunciation uh, tongue twisters. You know, this is a famous one. Betty, but, but first, before you do it, you've got to teach the different words, the different sounds. Betty, better. Bother, which is the last. Bitter, 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 bitter. Somebody's talking in the background. Can you go on mute, please, for a moment? Whoever's talking, mute your thing. Okay. So, uh, bother is the last name and pronounce it ah, bother. Remember, I'm from New York. So, a double T in the middle of a word or a T in the middle of the word for me sounds like a D. So, I'll say water, Betty, you know that kind of thing, whereas other people would pronounce that T more like a T, like the British. A water, butter, butter, no? But I don't, I pronounce it like a D. I'm from New York, so sorry. Okay, so ah, uh, butter, last name. Butter, but, that's our schwa sound, uh. I, I, that's our short one. Bit, bitter. Back, ah, batter. How do you make the batter? You go through the pronunciation of the vocabulary, right? And bought. Again, I'm from New York. I pronounce that aw oh, sound. Bought. I bought the cake at the supermarket. Okay, so once you've gone through the vocabulary, once you've gone through the pronunciation, then you try the tongue twister. Of course, try it on your students. So here we go. Betty Butter bought some butter, but she said the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. But a bit of better butter would make my batter better. So she bought some better butter, better than her bitter butter. And she put it in her batter, and the batter was not bitter. So, twas better Betty Butter bought a bit of better butter. Mm? So, have you done that one before? Glenda, you should get your husband to do it. <laughs> And go get ahead, him to Harry. pronounce it. Huh? Yeah. Go ahead. It's kind of complicated for us. <laughs> huh? Go ahead, Harry. Go ahead. I need another native speaker. Okay, go. Go hear you. Betty Potter bought some butter. What? She said, the yeah, butter's ahead. bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. But a bit of better butter would make my ba batter better. So she bought some better butter, better than her bitter butter. Uh -huh. And she put it in her batter, and the batter was bitter, or excuse me, was not bitter. So it was better. Betty Butter bought a bit of better butter. Are you originally <laughs> from the South? <laughs> Where yeah, are you from? He's from the South. <laughs> yeah, uh, can... huh? <laughs> Where's he from? North Carolina. Yeah, I could hear a Southern accent, definitely for sure. Okay, um, quickly to move on. Um, the three diphthong sounds, I, ow, oi, that we talked about before. You'd want to contrast them. You know? Buy, bow, boy. Tile, towel, toil. Again, lied, loud, loid. You want to go through all these diphthong sounds. We said mentioned before the double O in the spelling. Um, so it, we said the, the double O can be like a oo, like in cool or pool. The u uh in like book or good. The u uh in flood, blood and the awe by New York sound floor door. David, Patrick, hey. Sorry, my son decided he wants breakfast now. <laughs>
Okay, so again, the O-U-G-H. Look at all the different varieties of the O-U-G-H and the spelling and the pronunciation, mean, not the spelling, the pronunciation. Cough, tough, bow, do. Was that through? Yeah, through. So again, how do you teach this O-U-G-H pronunciation issues? You're gonna to have to put some of these words on the board and explain. You know, they cannot predict pronunciation just from this spelling, it's crazy. Um, this was just to show you like cough, through, rough, though, none of these words rhyme, but pony and baloney rhyme and they're not spelled the same. Um, so I just wanna show you a few more things and then some other seminar we're gonna to have to get into all this because we're already running out of time. Um, again, we want to mention the long and the short sounds. There's another book. Uh, it's called Bingo. It's called, where is it? Um, it's called The Great Bingo Book or something like that. It's written in the bibliography. I'll share the bibliography with Andres. And um, I don't know if you've seen this book before, but the students have to hear your pronunciation and then they have to, you know, like bingo, cover the thing or if you want to hand out the copy and you're in class, you could just have them exit out. Honestly, I don't know 100% how you do it on, in, online, but for example, Team Tim, Team Tim. Uh, and you can see uh, playing bingo with all these different things. Okay, then there was a whole part about consonants, which I'm not going to have time to talk about. Um, it says every time the doorbell rang, the dog started baking. Of course, it's missed like 90 slides and I'm only probably not even halfway through. But how do you explain the, for example, the CH in ache, the CH is a K. In catch, you know, there's a ch sound like a sneezing sound. In chef, it's an SH sound. You have to point out this. They're not gonna always, every time they see the CH pronounce it like a K, like, you know, for example, in chocolate, chocolate, it's not with it, it's not with a cockle, co you know, it's not a K. Uh, the GH, sometimes it's pronounced, sometimes it's not the GH. Like laughter, it's pronounced like an F. But in daughter, it's there's no F. There's, it's not pronounced, it's silent. Hmm? Um, ancient ocean. The, there's different spellings, but they have the same sound, no? So these are issues. Um, normally I'd have the students try to do this activity first where they figure out how they would pronounce the word and what is the letter that, or letters that are not pronounced. And then I'd go into some rules, which are the following slides. So for example, knife, uh, with knife, you'll obviously, students would be able to hopefully tell the teacher, knife, you don't pronounce the K, but you have to remind them, we also don't pronounce the final E, correct? Um, and a word like should, my students always try to pronounce that L. It's, that L is silent, like in the word half, the L is silent. Huh? Fasten, I don't pronounce that T in the middle. I don't say fasten. I don't know how Glenda's husband would pronounce it, but I don't pronounce the T in the middle, fasten. A word like island, that S is silent. Many of our students try to pronounce that S. The word debt, I owe a big debt of gratitude. That B is silent. Uh, we don't pronounce it. So after you go through a bunch of words that have letters in that words that are not pronounced, two TH sounds, the TH with the tongue out and the TH with the tongue in. So Thanksgiving, we want to show our tongue and have the students show their tongue. Thanksgiving Day comes on the, the, the. There's no tongue out. That's the silent, that's the TH in the mouth. Fourth, Thursday. Hmm? So again, you'd want to go through the whole reading about Thanksgiving. There's lots of good um, practice there with the two THs, tongue in and tongue out. I hope you know what I'm talking about with the two THs and the consonants. Yes. As English teachers, you probably know what I'm talking about. I hope. Um, we need to know, We Spanish speakers have big problems with the B and the V. So when I teach it, I always try to teach it as B, B, labial, B, 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 versus V, 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 which is labio dental, which is these teeth which are scratching the bottom uh, lip. So best, vest, boat, vote. Huh? And other ones like the sh versus ch, sh, like be quiet versus ch, uh, I'm sneezing, no? Shoes, choose, shy, chai. Sheet, 
cheat. We should be familiar with the ones that the Spanish speakers are, you know, the problems they're going to have in English and the, with the consonant sounds, especially the j and the y. It's very different to say he went to jail versus he went to Yale. Oh, they're very different. Okay, I know I got to stop, folks. Um, but again, we, if you're going to teach these to your students, you should be familiar with the most, the most frequent errors your students are going to have, like the S and the TH, mouse, mouse, sick, sick, and make sure with the TH out, the tongue is out. Um, the S and the Z, especially in a final position or even a middle position, loss, laws. We play, they, uh, we play, he plays, um, but of also possessives of nouns, a lot of people forget about that. So you can come back to that rule when you get to possessives of nouns. Um, and then again, here's like an answer key, you know, you can give some, you just dictate and the student will have to put them in the correct category, yeah? And see, there's the T and the D and the ID. At least I want to get through that and then I'll have to end, I guess. Um, you have to be, of course, teach the rules when we need the ID ending. I call ID ending, but really it's the extra syllable ending. Uh, words that, verbs that's, that finish with, regular verbs that finish with T or D or T-E-D-E, -E, no? So like want, wanted, need, needed, invite, invited decide decided we need to pronounce an extra syllable a lot of our students are trying to pronounce an extra syllable over here or over here where it's not needed they need to pronounce the extra syllable only in the third category um then the what i usually say is teach these few i think there's like eight of them teach these few verbs that regular verbs that finish with these endings and then you can teach your students all the rest to go in the middle and then you just have to practice 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 so one thing i want to mention is that um, word, uh, verb, regular verbs that end with these kind of endings will take that final T in the past tense pronunciation, right? Like chased, pronounced, shopped, barfed, laughed, correct? Cooked. But that's 25% frequency of the past tense, just as these, that third category, uh, ended, invited, needed, wanted, that has a 20% frequency. So which is the highest frequency is 55%. So this is one you'd want to really focus on and hear and listen to their pronunciation, have them work on that. Use the call Mary. It's not Merry Christmas, it's Merry Christmas. It's not Mary either. Merry Christmas. Yes. There's homonyms, all kind of homonyms to teach. I hope you teach your students homonyms, which is these words that have the same pronunciation but different spelling. Uh, whose, whose. You're only going to know the difference from the context, correct? Because um, that, I mean the spelling is different. The spelling is different, but in pronouncing these words from the context, you'll know. We're we talking about who is or who has. Or are we talking about belonging to what to what person? So there's all kinds of homonyms. I have lists and lists and lists of homonyms, which would be, I think, helpful to teach students because number one for vocabulary, number two for pronunciation. Huh? Typical one, waste, waste. Hmm? So there's all kinds of pronunciation tests that you can do, and I'll have to get to that some other time. Hmm? So should I put the shop, stop share for the moment? Okay, I think I'm back to you. So I've gone over my time as usual. Sorry, Andres. Um, some other time we'd have to get into the, um, you know, stress and intonation and any other things that kind of they're pending. But with pronunciation, there's always something pending. <laughs> so any questions, Andres, something for me? And I can't hear you. Andres, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. So speak up loudly, please. It was a pleasure attending you. Hello, you can you hear me now? Are you going or you want me to stop? That's oh, another thing uh, you Mary, can do. I just want to congratulate you for your, you, you can hear me now? Yes, now I can. I just want to congratulate you, okay? And, I'm, I'm, and I think that all my colleagues, we have enriched our knowledge today in the morning with this uh, pronunciation patterns. I'm sure that we have already known it from the university, yeah. uh, especially when you update and learn every single day. So I think this topic is very important for us now when we teachers introduce our classes, new vocabulary. So we have to adapt with this uh, 
Yeah. Yes, Brand Andres, Andres, this is one thing I wanted to mention. If you're teaching new words or it's like from a reading, there's some new vocabulary word and you don't know how to pronounce it yourself, you know, how are you going to tell the students how to pronounce it if you don't know how to pronounce it? So you're going to have to do, um, what do you call it, you know, like, what do you call it on your phone, you know, where you can hear the pronunciation of the word? I'm sure all of you have one, the, one of those apps, right? Yes, Miriam? Where you can... Any dictionary online has a pronunciation. Right, uh, exactly. For each word. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, I mean, you do have to kind of prep a little bit knowing what you're going to teach. And then when you come across a new vocabulary word, and if you don't have time, let me say, you know what? I really don't even know how to pronounce that word myself. It's a new word for me. Let me look it up and then I'll teach you the correct pronunciation. Hmm? But for example, as a student is speaking, like if they're doing an oral presentation, um, you don't want to bother them and distract them. And, uh, but you can write down what are some of the pronunciation um, errors they're making, you know? Or if it's a more informal thing and they say, you know, I want you to, you know, correct my pronunciation as I'm making a mistake. This is this idea, like as they're speaking and everything sounds good, you can keep the go sign. And if they make a pronunciation error, you can kind of put a little stop sign. So like, stop when we need to talk about that word, you know, uh, it's not convince, it's convince, you know, or it's not um, pronunciation, it's pronunciation, you know, you can go over those kind of errors, you know. Um, but as I said before, I think my, my main focus today is really just, it's kind of like a, a beginning seminar on pronunciation. There's a lot more to talk about in terms of pronunciation. Um, but the most important is, is there miscommunication? Um, are you able to understand the students even, or even if they made a mistake in their pronunciation? Or is there interference to all the students? Again, you don't want that one student to feel like, oh, he's picking on me or she's picking on me because, you know, I just made that mistake. I said pronunciation instead of pronunciation. And then I said, oh, Susana, you said it wrong. You know, no, you don't want that student to feel horrible and terrible. You'd want to, you know, jot down the little pronunciation errors the student's making and then at the appropriate time talk about it. Well, let's talk about these words today that I heard different students mispronounce. Hmm? And then you could discuss them and talk about the vowel sound or the consonant sound, or they put their stress on the wrong syllable and explain about that. Hmm? Okay, so uh, thank you all for your help with the technology and trying to get the music. Uh, just a suggestion, uh, Mary, yes. I just want to read a comment here in the chat box. Somebody yes. is suggesting for a next topic, maybe in the next year, yeah. if, you could, if you could provide us about uh, intonation. Yeah, about stress and intonation. Again, there are some, this is part of the problem with English. Like there's some rules, but not a whole lot of rules. And uh, that's a big problem because it's just like I said, being exposed to the language. The more exposure through songs, through TV, through radio, that's going to help a lot. Of course, if student can travel abroad, now with COVID it's kind of hard. Um, all that helps a lot. You got to think about when little kids are growing up in this country, in the United States, how do they learn um, the pronunciation of all these different words? You know, it's through exposure. Um, in by repetition, uh, repetition, yeah, repetition, rhymes, songs, um, all this kind of stuff, and then in um, you know, like kindergarten and first grade, all the phonics, and and you can spell, you know, this this spelling represents this sound and all that. They were kind of more like a spelling, spelling and sounds uh, combination kind of things. And they teach the kids that way. Your students don't have that advantage. You know, they learned Spanish as their first language. They learned pronounce it the way you, you, it looks like of um, if there is interference with meaning. Like if you have to stop and say, excuse me, what did you say? Uh, could you please repeat that? which today is kind of easier now with the computer, you can always make believe and say, oh, I didn't hear you, excuse me, could you repeat that? Um, you know, you kind of have a way to get around it, but otherwise, uh, you know, in the classroom, you, you could easily say, you know, could you please repeat that more clearly? Could you, what were you trying to say? Again, in the context of a sentence, it's usually clear, but you might say, well, I understood what you wanted to say, but you didn't, you, you didn't pronounce that one word quite correctly, you know? Thank you, thanks a lot. Yay. It was really good. Uh, Mary, thank you so much for your contribution to this uh, with this webinar. I, I hope I expect uh, I can invite you for the for another presentation. Yeah, okay, for teachers, a follow up, I know. think it's best, Andres, because there's there are some spelling rules and things and pronunciation rules. And there are some ways to give tests we could do, you know, and I haven't had a chance to get to that at all. Uh. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, teachers, uh, give me one minute because. 
I, I don't want to finish the last webinar of the year. And I think I, I just want to express my gratitude for you all, okay? Because I, I, I see all your faces, people from the beginning, <laughs> and people that are almost at the end, okay? So I would like to say thank you to every one of you, okay? I can see Miriam, Angelica, Diego, uh, Alejandra, Carmen, Glendis, Mr. Intriago, Tutor Jack, thank you so much, Carmen, Carmen Cango, Cecilia, you are one of the new, the new people that uh, come to, to the webinars, uh, Dalila, Mercedes, okay, Glenda, okay, I appreciate, I appreciate I'm you, so to you, Javier, Tania, Maria Fernanda, welcome, my friend. Elizabeth, Mario, okay, present, and we are going to learn too much from the webinars because webinars are very important for us to learn and acquire new knowledge. So teachers, I value your job and I, I think that, I hope that you have a very, a very um, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you so much. Okay, goodbye everybody. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year and God bless you all. Bye okay. bye. See ya. Okay. Bye. Lots of blessings. Bye. bye. Stop. Thank you, Andres. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you guys. so much. Bye bye. Thanks a lot. Very last. Yeah. Bye bye. Okay, Andres, I want to thank you. Andres, thank I want to thank you. My this, pleasure. These like few <laughs> sessions of attended, they have been fantastic, and they show me how interested you are in like making everybody just become better at what we're doing and changing trends. I mean, because after this, I'm very very sure many of us or many teachers that have not done blended learning or teaching and remote teaching they're going to start. And combining that with classes, it's going to be fantastic for everybody. Thank you, Andres, so much. Okay. I'm so glad and thanks for you, Miriam. And I said from the beginning, thanks for you all guys for, for having this compromise and also to be part of these uh, webinars because without your attendance, these webinars can, couldn't support any anything, okay? Thank you so much again. And welcome. The new year we have in, another plans, for example, uh, we are going to have a uh, 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 English sessions, webinars in English, and also uh, a first. I feel uh, so good because this was one of the best, you know, phonetics uh, webinar. And uh, believe me, I am really thankful with you because you were the one who joined all of us. And uh, for everybody, lots of blessings and the greetings from Loja. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank Thanks you so much, my dear Carmen. Thank my you. pleasure. God Bye. bless you. Bye-bye, you. guys. Have a nice day. Have a Merry Christmas, too. Bye. Let's go!